Hello everyone this is part 5 of what if Naruto was Iron Man, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Over the next four hours everyone walked in silence until they came to a fork in the road and Naruto stopped at the road as the others kept on walking. When Jiraiya passed Naruto he stopped and asked, is something wrong Gaki, drawing everyone's attention. The Sandime looked back at Naruto and noticed Naruto had a far off look on his face. Tamari said, oi, what's your problem? We're all going this way. As Naruto continued to look down the road and said, hey Gigi. Dot how long does it take to get to Suna from here? The Sandime said, it's two days hard travel from here if we went full out all the way. Why? Naruto asked, do we have a set day to be in Suna? As he looked at the Sandime. The Sandime said, we have to be there in 10 days. Why? Naruto said, I just recalled that Kanoa still has to collect the extra cash for the mission Team 7 did in Wave that was upgraded. It's only a half day's travel from here and we could get a warm bed and hot meal for tonight and we could leave tomorrow and only add about a half day extra travel if we go by trees. The Sandime narrowed his eyes and asked, that may be true but we have the three Suna Shinobi here to think about and they want to go home so unless you have a good reason to head that way or they agree to it I don't see any reason to make the trip there currently. Naruto frowned and said, I see. The Sandime asked, what is so important that you wish to go to wave Naruto? It's not like you to ask for something unless you have a very good reason. Naruto bit his lip and said, there is a private matter I have to take care of there. I am sorry for stalling everyone, as he started to walk towards Suna. Everyone looked at him and the Sandime asked, what is the private matter you need to go there for? Naruto said, there was something I ordered special there that should be done now. I was going to come back after the exam to get it but with everything that went down I haven't had a chance and I am worried that when we come back in a month that it might not still be there. Jiraiya asked, does it have anything to do with that? As he rubbed his right arm where Naruto had his broke. Naruto said, no. It's just something I needed to order because of what happened on Team 7 Mission to Wave. Quote. The Sandime frowned and looked at the Suna siblings and said, do any of you have a problem with making a small detour? Naruto said, if it helps I am willing to pay you each $500 for the day of wasted time and with the way Wave has recovered I am sure you all might be able to find something there you like, in a pleading kind of voice. Tenten said, I don't see a problem with it, as she looked at the pleading look on Naruto's face. Gara saw the look and said, we will do it, and Temari said, Gara, you can't do that. I mean we. Gara interrupted her and said, please Temari. He is one of my precious people. If it was not for him I would still not be able to sleep and Shukaku would still be able to possible attack and kill you. Making Temari eyes soften as she looked at Gara. Tenten asked, who is Shukaku? Making everyone frown. Gara said, Shukaku is the Ichibi no Shukaku, the one-tailed demon, weakest of the Bayou. It was sealed into me by order of my father to make me a super weapon for Suna. Tenten started to say something when Naruto asked, Tenten, is a kunai sealed in a scroll the same as the scroll? Tenten blinked and said, of course not. Why? Naruto said, Gara is the scroll, Shukaku is the kunai. Tenten looked at him and said, I already know that. I use sealing a lot so I know the difference but what I was wondering is why Shukaku could get free before but not now based on what everyone was saying. Jiraiya said, before the invasion Gara had a weak seal with a berserker seal on top of it making him unstable preventing him from going to sleep unless the demon took control of him. After the invasion I put a new seal on him and it made it where Gara can sleep and not have to worry about the demon. Tenten asked, how were they able to seal a demon into Gara and what effect did it have on you besides being able to take over your body? Gara said, Shukaku was sealed into me when I was still inside my mother and it cost her life. Besides not being able to sleep I have larger chakra reserves than a normal person along with my ability to control sand and my automatic defense that protects me. Tenten asked, but why did they seal it into you before you were born? Why not put it in an adult? Naruto turned his back away from everyone looking down the road to wave again and said, 
an adult's chakra coils are already developed and cannot handle the strain of having the demon's chakra put into his or her coils releasing the demon back into the world killing the adult. The only way to successfully seal a demon is to seal it into an infant who is either just about to be born or one who's only a few hours old so that as the child grows up the coils would adjust and make it where the child could absorb the chakra making it their own. Tenten asked, that sand creature you turned into during the invasion. That was Shukaku, wasn't it? Gara nods and she looked at Naruto and asked, how do you know so much about it Naruto and how were you able to defeat a demon? The Yondime did it but it cost him his life and he was the Hokage, you were a Genin. Dot and what did you mean when you said that when Kyubi met you that it was fucked during the exams, as she looked at him. Naruto sighed and said, my birthday is the same as your name, figure it out, as he began to walk again. Tenten blinked and thought, Tenten. October 10th, as her eyes got wide as she realized that was the day Kyubi attacked and she asked, so you're like Gara. The Sandime closed his eyes and said, Jinchuriki. The power of a human sacrifice that is what those who have a demon sealed into them are called. Gara here was turned into one to make him a weapon. Naruto here was chosen to save our village by the Yondime. There are those who wanted to turn Naruto into a weapon like other villages such as Suna. I refused to do that and I wanted him to have as normal a life as he could. I issued a law that if anyone were to mention the true fate of the QB to those who did not know that I would have them punished or executed. The Yondaim asked that Naruto be viewed as a hero, causing Naruto to snort. Naruto said, let's just go Gigi. You don't have to explain your actions or the actions of others because it won't matter. You should know that by now. People will believe what they want. I have done come to terms that I am nothing more than a sacrificial lamb who pays for all those who were hurt or died by the actions of who or what is a part of me, as he began to walk toward Suna. The Sandime looked at Naruto sadly and Tenten thought, that's almost what Dad said about Eva. Flashback. Dustin nods and said, good. I hate to do this but you can't tell anyone about what you saw. If, if people found out my connection to Eva and what she represents then people will come for me and will use you to get to me. Dot dot. Eva. What Eva represents is my sins. What your mother and I created was something that we wanted to help save people. Dot but in the end it wound up destroying hundreds of lives and a country. Someday it could even destroy the world. I. I wanted to redeem what your mother and I created and. Dot and I used an innocent as a sacrifice. Dot but I believe that my sins will be forgiven someday. I hope when I meet your mother for real on the other side that I can tell her that our sins were forgiven as he walked into the back. End flashback. Tenten thought, could Naruto be the sacrifice that he used and if so what connections does he have to Eva? He was there right before Eva appeared. As she looked at Naruto and thought, his hands, they felt like metal. As Tenten was in thought the Sandime was looking sadly, Jiraiya was leaning against a tree, Gara had his arm crossed looking at his siblings and Temari bit her lip as Kankuro placed his hand on her shoulder and whispered, let's do it sis. The past few weeks have been great not having to worry about being killed by being close to our brother. He actually asked in his own way and is trying. I know I want to go home as well but a day is not really that long. Tamari sighed and said, fine but you have to pay us like you said and you had better be right about a hot meal and a soft bed. Loud enough for everyone to hear. Naruto got a smile on his face and said, I am, just you wait. Come on, let's go, as he ran back the hundred feet he had made it down the road to Suna and started to go down the road toward Wave. The Sandime looked at Jiraiya as the group started to head down the road behind Naruto and Jiraiya nods as he began to follow the group. A few hours later the group arrived at the great Naruto bridge and everyone but Naruto eyes were wide and Kankuro asked, what the hell, why is this bridge named after you? Naruto looked back sadly and said, because here is where my innocence died as he began across the bridge. Everyone seemed confused about this including the Sandime who thought, damn you Kakashi. If you would have actually been a real sensei to all your students and not showed favoritism in your reports then I would know what he is talking about. As the group followed Naruto across the bridge and entered the town just at the beginning of the bridge they saw that a bunch of children ran up to Naruto and were screaming for him to pick him up and play with them, adults were either nodding toward him, smiling, as well as giving small bows and several girls were blushing as they looked at him. Jiraiya looked at this and said, Sensei, this is how he should have been seen in Kanoa, as he saw the way Naruto relaxed around the people here. 
The Sandine looked down sadly and thought, if this is how they view him then someday he may come here to live if Kanoa does not change, consequences be damned. Naruto smiled as the kids were tugging at his pants and screaming out his name and he said, hey everyone. Tell you what. If I show you all a cool trick would you all let me and my company through? It's been a long journey and I have a lot to do and only a short amount of time. Several of the kids said, yeah. As they got all excited. Naruto nods and he jumped into the air and began to float shocking Kankuro and Temari and Tenten since she did not get to see him fly because of the fighting. Several of the kids screamed, but we already saw you fly. Naruto said, I know so just wait for it. As he closed his eyes and held his left hand above his head and all the ninja tensed as they felt chakra begin to gather in his left hand but could only barely see the blue glow and then Naruto raised his right hand and jerked his right hand a second before a blue ball of chakra shot out of his left hand. Around 100 feet in the air an explosion rocked the sky followed by nine others and the kids screamed, fireworks. Naruto slowly landed on the ground and said, see, neat trick huh? as the kids all cheered and began to go back to their parents who clapped and listened to their kids cheer. When the crowd had dispersed Naruto smiled faded a little and he said, all right, sorry about the wait, I will show you all to where we can stay the night, as he began to walk away. Tamari asked, what is he, bipolar? He changes from all happy and excited to sad and depressed at the drop of a hat. The Sandime sighed and said, it's because he let his emotional mask drop. What you all saw was probably something he has hardly ever showed anyone. The real him. Not the happy-go-lucky idiot who screams for attention like you all saw in the exams, as he began to follow Naruto. The group was in deep thought and Jiraiya thought, that is also the way his mother was. She carried her emotions on her sleeves, as he followed. They soon came to a two-story home and Naruto walked toward the door and knocked on it. A female voice said, just a moment and when the door opened Tsunami appeared in the door and her eyes brightened and said, Naruto. As she pulled him into a hug and he smiled as he hugged her back and said, Hello Tsunami, how are you doing? Tsunami let go and kissed his head getting a confused look from him a moment as he actually felt the kiss and he said, I've been good. I got promoted like I said I would. Tsunami said, Congratulations, come on in and. Dot who is all these people Naruto? Naruto said, oh, let me introduce you, this is my new teammate Tenten, my part-time sensei Jiraiya, the Sandime Hokage of Kanoa, and this is our diplomatic escort to Suna Temari, Kankuro, and Gara. We were on our way to Suna when I requested to stop by here to get that extra pay from the old drunk and to finish a few things I had left to do. Tsunami said, well it's a pleasure to have such an honored group here and normally I would let you all stay here but the Kazanami Inn just opened two weeks ago and seeing as you are the owner of it I figure you would want your guest to stay there right. Naruto ignored the shocked looks everyone was giving him and said, yeah but I still don't see why you all are doing that for me. A voice that brought a smile to Naruto face said, because you turned down the job of being the feudal lord here in wave making me the take the job you blonde barker. The Sandime asked as he looked at the new arrival recognizing him and asked, what do you mean the feudal lord Tazuna and it is good to see you again. Tazuna who was dressed in a business suit said, exactly what I mean. After Gato was killed the people here ran the old feudal lord out of the country vowing to kill him if he ever returned since he sold us out to Gato. When the kid here came back to wave the people here asked him to be our new feudal lord since he was the hero of the country. He said he did not think he was old and wise enough to do the job so he asked that the real hero be elected and he pointed out that he would not have been here had it not been for me so the people elected me as the new feudal lord and I agreed. Tenten asked, why did you turn down the offer Naruto, that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Naruto said, I have my reason. Now you old drunk bastard, what the hell is this Kazanami crap I was just hearing about and I thought I was going to be a silent partner, not owner. Tazuna said, well, the inn as you know was originally used for Gato slave prostitution ring and when you were here during those three weeks and took out those men who were still running it freeing those girls it just felt like the right payment to give the building to you so after remodeling it and and hiring a few of the girls who stayed and offered to work there in exchange for room and board since they didn't have anywhere to go after Gato killed their families we all felt everyone won. I know you wanted me to be the owner and you just be a silent partner so that way someone here in Wave could keep an eye on it and run it and you would never actually touch the money it makes. Naruto sighed and said, and the name, as he glared at Tazuna. Tazuna said, oh that. 
Well there are two reasons for that. One because you are the wind of change for the land of wave and you already know the second reason. Naruto said, must not kill drunk, must not kill drunk, as he began to rub his temples. The Sandime said, I take it they know about that Naruto. Naruto said, they know part but not all and drop it. So would you mind setting all these people here in a couple of rooms? I still need to go see someone before it gets dark, as he looked at Tazuna. Tazuna said, sure, after all it is my duty as the feudal lord to welcome as many diplomats as I can. Please follow me and I will show you to the inn where you can stay. Tamari asked, oi, what about our money? Naruto stopped and turned his right arm away from everyone and pulled his wallet out and counted out the cash and handed it to them all and Jiraiya asked, where are you going Gaki? You know it's not safe for. Naruto said, around and don't go there. I've been taking care of myself since I was four. If anything happens follow the explosions, as he took off toward the town leaving the group behind. Tenten asked, where is he going? Tazuna sighed and said, he's going to be going to the shrine, making everyone look at him. Temari asked, what do you mean? We came all this way so he could go to some shrine. Tsunami said, forgive my father. The shrine is the name the people of Wave have given to the graves of the two missing nins Naruto team fought to save our country. In the end they both died to save our country so we honor them for that but for Naruto it's personal. I don't know the exact details since I respect his privacy but something happened between the boy Haku and Naruto. Tenten blinked as she remembered what she read and the Sandime asked, Naruto mentioned something about losing his innocence on the bridge, do you know what he was talking about? Tsunami said, no I don't, sorry. The Sandime nods and Jiraiya asked, where is this shrine so if he runs into trouble we can get there quicker. Tsunami said, did you notice the cliff about a mile south of the bridge when you were crossing it? Getting a nod from everyone, it is at the top of the cliff. Jiraiya nods and said, well let's go get checked in so we can eat and perhaps I can do some research, as he let out a perverted giggle as he began to follow Tazuna. The group followed Tazuna for about 10 minutes until they came to a four-story inn with a blue-black sloped roof, 60 windows, and the top half was painted sky blue and the bottom was painted sea blue with the two blending together in the middle and a gold plaque with the name Kazanami Inn on the front. Tenten said, so Naruto owns this place. Looks nice. Tazuna said, yeah, the people of Wave love Naruto, even after we learned what he has in him, as he glared at the Sandime. The group froze and the Sandime asked, did Naruto tell you about that? Tazuna said, no, he had it bad enough that he doesn't want to tell anyone about it. The ninja you sent here with the adjusted price for the mission asked why would we chose a demon like him as our village hero. When we defended him and asked why he called Naruto a demon he told us about the Kyuubi being inside him. When Naruto came here a child asked him and Naruto said it was true and started to leave but the people here told him we still saw him as our hero and even more of one because he holding Kyuubi from coming here as well. We told that ninja before he left if he ever came back here again we would kill him so please feel free to send that man back anytime, with a smirk on his face. The Sandime shook his head and thought, I will check to see who I sent here and he will be spending time with Ibiki and Anko both, and said not Eve. Tazuna said don't. Naruto already defended your village and said only a few saw him that way not everyone. I don't know why he would protect your village by lying but we won't dishonor him or his sacrifice now please follow me. As he walked inside to the reception desk and Temari and Tenten both were shocked to see a girl the same age as them behind the counter remembering hearing about the slave prostitution and for a moment both girls looked at each other thinking the same thing. Tazuna said, hello Isis, how are you today? Isis said, I am doing well Tazuna-sama, how are you today and who are our honored guest? Tazuna said, this is a few honored guests who are traveling with Naruto. Isis spoke up in a fan girl voice, Naruto-sama is here. Where is he? I want to see him again after he freed me from Gato and his men, with an excited look on her face. Tazuna said, he's gone to the shrine Isis but you can check in his guest. Isis said, oh of course, please sign the guest list and the rooms will be on the house for the night since you're with Naruto-sama, as she turned the registry around for them to sign. As the group signed the list Tenten asked, what should we do now Sandime-sama since the sign shows two hours until dinner. The Sandime said, I guess since you all have your room key you can do what you want until then but please leave your hiate in your pocket so people won't suspect you of being ninja and we are not accused of being idiots like a certain people with distaste sounding at the end. 
Tenton looked as the sand diamond Jiraiya went up the stairs and she turned and saw the three sand sibs looking at each other and she shook her head before she turned and left the inn. Naruto after leaving the group walked through town for about 10 minutes until he came to a shop that he was looking for and he walked in. The man behind the counter looked up and said, Oh hello Naruto-sama, what can I do for you today? Naruto said, I was wondering if that order is ready. The man nods and said, yeah but do you have the money? Naruto pulled out his wallet and handed the man $5,000 and the man pulled out a scroll and asked, do you know how to unseal items? Naruto said, yeah. The man said, good, then just make sure that scroll is in the middle of where you want to set it because it will unseal 10 seconds after you drop blood on the seal and it will be next to impossible to move again, got it. Naruto nods and said, thank you, as he turned and left. When Naruto got to the graves of Zabuza and Haku he closed his eyes a moment when he heard a voice asked, so it was Zabuza Momoki that Team 7 encountered on your mission here. I thought that was just a rumor, causing Naruto to turn and look at Tenten who walked out of the woods. Naruto asked, what are you doing here? Tenten pointed toward the grave and said, I'm a weapon master and respect other weapon users. I heard the rumor that Zabuza had died and I wanted to see if the rumors were true and since I recognize the famous head chopping cleaver of Zabuza I can see it is true. Naruto frowned and said, they were as you can so if you don't mind please leave. Tenten crossed her arms and said, I also wanted to see the grave of the so-called hero claimed by Naruto Uzumaki on a tree in Kanoa who goes by the name Haku Momoki. Naruto eyes wide in a moment and he said, so you found that huh? As he looked away at the grave. Tenten asked as she walked over, want to talk about it? Naruto asked, why are you here really? In an accusing tone. Tenten said, you're my teammate and you look like you're hurting and I want to help. Why are you so defensive? Naruto ignored her question and he pulled out a scroll and walked over to where the sword of Zabuza and the cross with Haku mask was and he removed both from the ground and set the scroll on the ground where they had been before he opened it and keeping his hand away from Tenten he unsealed his hand and cut his finger with the nail of his thumb and let some blood hit the seal. A few seconds later a puff of smoke covered where the scroll had been and there stood a marble platform with a statue that looked exactly like Haku and Zabuza stood and Naruto looked at both sadly as he took the sword of Zabuza and put it on a slot on his back and the sword clicked when it got in position to look like he was carrying it and he took the broke mask of Haku and he looked at the mask and said, I broke this mask that day on the bridge. As he slowly placed the broke mask over half of Haku's face. Tenten sat down on a rock and asked, what happened on the bridge? You said you lost your innocence there but I don't understand what you mean. Why are you going through so much effort for the dead? Naruto was silent for several moments and said, some call that bridge the bridge of destiny as well as the bridge of heroes. I call that bridge the bridge of lost innocence. On it I faced true evil for the first time in my life. Evil that wanted nothing more than to stick its hands through the chest of its enemy and pull the heart out while it still beats. An evil that was so powerful that it could and would have destroyed all in its path. Dot and that evil was in my own heart. As he looked at the grave. Tenten asked, so you met the QB somehow. Confused. Naruto shook his head no and said, no. There on the bridge for a moment the mask hunter Nin who was Zabu's a partner had used me as bait to get Sasuke to defend me so he could be taken out and it worked. Dot dot. Sasuke took what appeared to be a fatal strike to save me. It was the second time that someone took a strike to protect me because I was too weak. Sasuke died in my arms and I felt no pulse on his body. Dot dot. I heard whispers in my head. At first I thought that it was imagination. Dot dot. When I finally learned the truth of why everyone hated me I thought that everyone was wrong, that the ceiling had went different and the QB and I were not in the same body but when I heard the whispering for revenge I finally had to accept that the QB was really in me. Dot but on that bridge I learned the truth, in that moment, when I saw Sasuke die for me something snapped in me. Dot dot. I didn't care what the whispering was, I didn't care if I live or die. Dot all I wanted was to see the hunter nin dead. I gave into it. Dot dot. I was consumed by the power that flowed through me, I wanted more of it, it was like a drug that you can never get enough of and yet I felt empty inside. I felt like I was floating in my body as I watched my body destroy the hunter Nin destroying the innocence of the boy behind the mask, destroying the future he had, destroying his will to live and most of all destroying the first person who saw me as me and care if I live or die without pity or duty being behind it. Tenten asked, what happened? 
as she looked concerned and a little scared. Naruto closed his eyes and stood up and touched the mask on Haku face and said, like this mask I was broken inside. When I saw Haku face I fought myself to regain control of my body. I heard the whispering asking why do I resist now, when it could have been me there dead and I fought against the whispering I thought it was Kyuubi I was going against. It wasn't. It was the part of me I always denied to listen to, the part who always wanted to hurt those who hurt me, I realized at that moment that it was me a part of me that wanted to kill the hunter Nin, to rip his heart out. I could not let that part of me that wanted to hurt him win. It was the hardest fight I have ever had. It was at that moment I truly understood what Haku meant when he said true strength comes from protecting what is precious to you. I faced an ugly truth that day. I faced that I am not the happy-go-lucky idiot everyone thought I was, I am not the cold-blooded killer who wanted to destroy everything but, dot but I could be since I am someone who is parts of both and neither. Realizing that scared me more than learning the QB was inside of me. I could not let that happen. I would not let that happen. Unfortunately all of this realizing came at a heavy price. Haku told me why he was there and why he had nothing left to live for since I destroyed him in battle making him useless as a tool to Zabuza. He asked me to kill him and stain my hands with his blood. It was to be the last request from my first true friend. I, I went to fulfill it but he had one last duty to Zabuza and at the last moment before my blade pierced his heart he shushined away and took a Chidori from Kakashi killing him to save Zabuza. Point one oh seconds later it was learned their employer double crossed them and in my grief I convinced Zabuza to kill Gato to avenge Haku. Point six oh seconds later it was learned Haku only put Sasuke in a fake death and all my anger and revenge that caused Haku his life was for nothing. Dot dot. They call me a hero. If it was not for Haku I would most likely have lost myself that day on the bridge to my dark side and killed everyone here before I returned to Kanoa to do the same in my anger. I vowed on these graves that I would protect what is precious to me using everything in my power to save them. The QB, my own skills, even my life. I would never cause those I care for to be hurt ever again, even from myself. Tenten looked sadly at Naruto and she said, so that is why you put so much effort into honoring their memory, to punish yourself for what happened that day. Naruto said, I am a sacrifice, it is my responsibility to be the one who gets hurt, not be the one who causes the pain. Tenten got up and went to slap him in the face when Naruto heard Eva in his head scream a warning and he grabbed Tenten by the side and leaps back as she screamed, what the hell are you doing? Before an explosion hit where they had been standing as Naruto landed and took a defensive stance in front of her and said, hello Sushi, where's your partner? As he began to look around and curse himself as he saw where he had landed. Tenten turned and paled as she saw Kisum and recognizing him as a member of the Seven Swordsmen as he was standing there where they had been moments before withdrawing his sword from the ground as she also began to look around and thought, shit, we are trapped on the ledge here, I can tree walk down the side but I don't know if he can but Naruto seems to know him and he asked about a partner, not good, as she began to prepare for battle without looking obvious. Kisum stood up and said, well, 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 what do we have here? I come to pay my respects to my old buddy Zabuza and I find the QB and his girlfriend. Tell you what, you come nice and easy and I let her go. Naruto asked, and Uchiha Itachi is just going to let her go as well. As his eyes darted around looking for Itachi making Tenten pale again as she recognized that name. Kissam smirked and said, Itachi not here right now. H has got his pocky addiction to feed right now near the border of wind and fire country. Imagine his surprise when he finds out I already captured our target, as he prepared to attack. Naruto thought, did you find him anywhere Eva? Eva said, no, it appears he is telling the truth and is alone. What should we do? Naruto glanced at Tenten and thought, I don't think she has any weapons. I need to lead him away from her. Him, as he quickly created a plan in his head. Naruto said, you think you can beat me kiss him? You're nothing without Itachi to save you and your sword. I put both you on the ground last time remember. Kissam said, you surprised me last time but this time you have nowhere to run to and your girlfriend here also needs protecting. Tenten said, I'm not his girlfriend and I don't need protecting. Naruto said Tenten. Dot for once, shut up and listen to your superiors. You're always going around unarmed unless you're expecting battle. You've been warned before over it but this time it will cost you. You need to think more like me and seal your weapons in your cloths like I do. 
In my sleeves I have hundreds of kunais in one sleeve and shurikens in the other and all I have to do is send chakra into the arms like this. As a shuriken appeared in his left hand and a kunai in his right as he still stood in front of Tenten and held his weapons ready. Kisum at that moment charged toward Naruto who threw both weapons which Kisum stopped long enough to deflect them but that was all the time Naruto needed to throw the cloak off his shoulders and gravity pulled it off his arms as he charged forward to meet Kisum letting it hit the ground. Kisum saw Naruto charging toward him and he swiped from the side with his sword at Naruto who deflected it with his left arm raising his right arm and three senbans launched out of it toward Kisum who dodged to the side letting them fly by and hit a tree behind him exploding. Naruto said, shit. As he ducked under the next swipe from Kisum who laughed and said, oh. Dot did your little senban trick fail this time. I saw it enough last time to know you have some kind of senban launcher on your right arm. As he brought an overhead slice down toward Naruto head who crossed his arms above his head making an X and Kisum said, wrong move kid, Samehada doesn't cut, it shaves. As he pulled toward himself drawing the blade out of the cross block Naruto had it in as pieces of metal came flying and Naruto jumped back. Tenten took that moment to unload a barrage of kunais and shurikens she unsealed from Naruto cloak she put on and Kisum jumped back and began to deflect them and he said, should have stayed out of it girly. Now I am going to kill you. As he charged toward her. Naruto saw this and thought, Eva, drop the weights. As he charged to intercept Kisum. Kisum saw this and at the last moment changed his attack from Tenten who was back completely on the edge toward Naruto who was going full speed and he sliced Samehada across Naruto's stomach and the sound of metal on metal was heard as small pieces of metal flew into the air. Kisum blinked as he looked at Naruto and said, what the hell? First you're not losing any chakra to Samehada and now every time I attack you there is some kind of armor protecting your body but I don't see any. Naruto said, it sucks for you that I know the secret to chakra metal. As he glanced at Tenten and asked, you okay Tenten? Tenten said, yeah but I don't have much room to fight and looks like I have the same problem I had with Temari here. Naruto frowned and started to ask, can you GE? Kisum interrupted him as he said, sorry kiddies, not this time. As he began to flash through hand signs and a water dragon appeared and charged toward Naruto and Tenten. Tenten screamed as she saw it coming not seeing a way to escape and Naruto turned and grabbed her and jumped into the air carrying her as he flew over the top of the dragon. He landed on a tree away from the cliff edge and sat her down only to hear Eva say, behind you. Naruto turned bringing both his arms up and blocked another strike from Kisum. Unfortunately it caught Tenten in the right arm shredding some of her shirt, his cloak and her arm a little causing her to scream out in pain before he could deflect it. Naruto gritted his teeth as he kicked Kisum in the side knocking him off the tree and charged toward Kisum forcing him to jump back and he screamed, are you okay Tenten? As he ducked under another slash from Kisum. Tenten was quickly wrapping her arm to stop the bleeding said, yeah but give me a minute if you can. Naruto jumped back as Samehada hit the ground in front of him and said, get out of here and get help. Tenten looked up as she tied the last knot and said, no. You won't last long enough. Naruto frowned and thought, status Eva. Eva said damage to both arms from blocking those attacks has made using the Senban launcher and the thrust cannon currently impossible. Also damage to the stomach prevents prolonged flight. 10 seconds burst at best currently unless you wish to take the chance of damaging the chest plates. Overall internal integrity is still normal. Kisum saw Naruto standing there as he glanced at Tenten who had unsealed more weapons but were currently waiting and Naruto thought, no choice, Eva, Chakra Saber and Chakra Scythe. Eva said, understood, reach both hands behind you to each ass cheek but please do not take any damage at this time, Chakra Saber on left. Send Chakra into each to activate. Naruto jumped into the air again as he reached his hands behind him to his ass and two four-inch rods shot out of his cheeks and Naruto screamed, Tenten, catch as he spun in the air throwing the rod in his left hand at Tenten as he brought the right around sending Chakra to his right hand and the rod extended to over 5 feet long and a 3 foot long curved blade of Chakra shot out of the top. Tenten saw Naruto jump in the air as she took that moment to throw the weapon she unsealed at Kisum forcing him to dodge and she heard Naruto scream, Tenten, catch, as she looked up and saw a 4 inch rod coming toward her and she reached out and caught it. At that moment she heard a strange noise and looked up seeing a side made out of chakra appear in Naruto hand as he brought it down toward Kisum who blocked it with Samehada. Tenten screamed out as she began to unseal more weapons, what is this? 
Naruto was about to answer when Kisum knocked the side out of his hand sending it flying toward a tree causing it to deactivate and return to a four in rod before he smacked Naruto in the side with Sameha descending him into a tree. Naruto groaned from the hit and he slowly started to stand up when he felt a punch in the side of the helmet and he was sent flying again four feet away from Kisum who said damn it. You got armor everywhere, as he shook his hand. Naruto slowly got to all four and he said chakra, send chakra into it. Kisum turned quickly to Tenten who threw a kunai at him as she sent chakra into the rod in her hand and a three foot long blade appear and she said, holy shit, it's the Raijin. Kisum frowned and started to flash through hand signs again and five sharks made out of water flew at Tenten and she quickly sliced through them but Kisum appeared behind her and hit her in the back of the head knocking her out as he prepared to kill her with his sword Naruto kicked him in the side sending him flying. Kisum hit a tree feet first as he launched toward Naruto after rebounding and Naruto grabbed the chakra saber and he started to block Kisum's strikes like he had done with Yugao as he was being forced toward the cliff again as Kisum's strikes got faster and more powerful. As Naruto reached the edge Kisum said, now I got you and when I am done with you I will finish off your girl. As he went to slice Naruto down the middle with Samehada but Naruto held up his left arm taking the strike again and Naruto went to slice Kisum in the side with the chakra saber but Kisum grabbed Naruto wrist stopping the strike and he began to overpower Naruto. Just then a kunai hit Kisum in the back making him scream out and turn his body in case more were coming and he saw Tenten who had woke up long enough to attack one more time pass out again but the moment of distraction is what Naruto needed to take Kisum own motion and pulled both of them off the cliff. As they fell Kisum let go of Naruto to prepare to land on the water and Naruto used his ability to fly to get behind Kisum and he quickly wrapped his arms around Kisum and said, here's a move I saw Lee do, as he began to spin both of them head first into the water below. As they hit the water he released Kisum and he heard Eva say, structural integrity down to 60%. Minor stress leak in the stomach section. Be careful Naruto, we're not completely airtight at the moment. I would say 10 minutes of air before you have to surface due to water intake. Kisum was under the water shaking his head as he saw Naruto turn himself right side up and he thought, does he actually intend to fight me underwater? My bloodline allows me to breath underwater thanks to my gills. Naruto activated his chakra saber and he frowned as he saw his power level drop from 70 to 69, 0 0.68, 0 0.67. He deactivated it and thought, how do I seal it either? Eva said, just place it on your left ass cheek and I will do the rest. Naruto did as she said and it was consumed into a seal. Kisum took Samehada and he tested his swing under the water and he began to use his feet to swim quickly toward Naruto who turned and began to go deeper into the water. Kisum followed until they were about 200 feet below the surface and Naruto turned and put his hands together and two other Naruto appeared and they split up into three directions. Kissam stopped and looked at all three and thought, stupid clones, which one is the real one? All three stopped when they got about 60 yard away from Kissam and they faced him and held both their hands out to the side and began to gather chakra as Raisin Shuriken appeared. Kissam eyes got wide and thought, shit, as all six were thrown at him but under the water they only went about half as fast as they normally would and the two Kajbunshin disappeared. Naruto saw that Kissam used Samehada to eat the closest. Two and he turned to get the second two and Naruto saw. He only had 5% of his chakra left and he looked at his hand and saw that his cloak shield had dropped and he activated his thrusters in his feet that allow him flight and underwater movement and he charged toward Kisum who had Samehada eating the closest two raisin shurikens and had his back to Naruto and Naruto got there just as Kisum began to turn and he grabbed Kisum like he did before they hit the water and said, let's go to hell together. As Kissam saw the Iron Man armor and then the Raisin Shuriken sliced into Kissam's side slicing off his arm that held Samehada and hit Naruto as well but Naruto armor absorbed the chakra from the attack giving him just enough to return his cloaking shield. Kissam who was screaming out in pain was swimming to the surface as fast as possible so he could slow the blood loss from the slash in his side and the stump where his arm had been. Naruto saw this and laughed a moment until the HUD display went out and everything went dark inside the armor and he said, Eva, what's going on? Eva said, stand by. Naruto waited a moment as he tried to move as he felt his body hit the ocean floor and he asked, Eva, with a little bit of fear in his voice. Eva said, stand by please. I am very busy. Naruto felt water inside the suit up to his waist and was getting more scared when Eva said, beginning power-up sequence. 
as the HUD display showed up again and Naruto saw the sonar display was on and he asked, what's going on Eva? Eva said, sorry about that but I had to divert resources toward repairing the damage to the stomach section of the suit. The pressure from the water caused the suit to crack in that area. I was able to seal off everything above the damage area to keep the water from going any higher than that but it took nearly all the remaining power you had but after I got it into position I was able to release a little QB chakra into the power cell and currently we have 15% power. I would suggest we get out of here as soon as possible. Naruto frowned and thought, but what about the Samehada? I don't want Kissam coming back and getting it. Eva was silent for a moment and said, based on where we ended up and where it began to fall I would say it is somewhere within 100 square yards of our current location but I cannot tell you in which direction. Naruto looked at the sonar display and thought, can you give me inferred as well as sonar? Perhaps the body heat from Kissam arm can help us find it. Naruto saw the HUD display change and he looked around and saw several heat sources under the water and he looked in a circle and he said, that one, the one that is getting cooler quick. Do you have a lock on it? Eva said, yes. Naruto said, all right, let's check that out. As he began to slowly go toward the heat source. A few minutes later they came across a bed of coral and Naruto saw Kissam arm but did not see Samehada so he grabbed the arm and he looked around and thought, damn it. Do you think if we come back when we get more chakra you could still find that area where it might be? As he saw his chakra level slowly going down. Eva said, yes though every minute the range gets bigger. Naruto sighed and said, fine, it's a lost item then, as he began to go toward the surface. When he made it to the surface he looked around and saw that Kissam was nowhere in sight and he suddenly felt lighter as all the armor was sealed and he thought, Eva, what's going on? Eva said, I need to work on repairing the damage to the suit and it would look weird with the cracks in your cloths where the damage was, would it not? Naruto frowned and thought, all right, just let me know when it is ready again as he swam toward the wall and he used chakra to climb to the top. When he got to the top he saw Tenton still passed out and he frowned as he ran over to her and he tapped her on the arm and said Tenton. Tenton, can you hear me, wake up. Tenton groaned as she turned a little and Naruto thought, well at least she alive. As he looked around the clearing and his breath caught as he looked at the statue and he saw the mask Haku had was completely shattered and he let a tear fall. He then got up and grabbed all the weapons and he blinked as he found the chakra side and thought, well I will have to wait until the suit is repaired to reseal it, as he put it in the pocket of his vest. He then walked back over to where Tenton was and he picked her up and began to carry her back to town. A little while later Gara was in the middle of the road screaming, no, make it go away, please stop, as he held his head with a crazy look on his face. On a bench on the side of the road Kankuro asked, funny, before when he was like this I would be running and hiding. Tamari sweat dropped and said, I can't believe him, how embarrassing, as she slapped her head. Kankuro said, hey, you can't blame him. Just then Gara stood up straight and pulled out some of the money Naruto had gave him and said, I will have another please. A man said, look kid. I know you like the slushies but if you keep drinking them that fast the brain freeze you're feeling is going to get worse, now what? Naruto-sama is everything alright? As he saw Naruto coming down the road with Tenten in his arms passed out. Gara, Kankuro and Temari all three turned and Temari saw Naruto cloak on Tenten and said, looks like she was easy after all, with a snicker in her voice. Naruto glared at her and asked, do any of you three know any medical jutsu? Making all three blink. Kankuro who was snickering a moment was the first to recover and asked, what's wrong, she like it rough. Naruto kicked him right in the nuts and he screamed out in pain before he fell to the ground holding himself and Naruto glared and asked, now, do you know any medical jutsu? Gara said, no, we don't Naruto, why? Naruto turned and said, get your siblings and follow me. We were attacked by a missing nin. All three got serious at this point, well as serious as one can be while holding himself but Temari asked, who was it and what happened? Just then Tenten shifted in Naruto grip and Kissam arm that was on her stomach fell to the ground making a woman nearby scream and the slushy bender to pale. Naruto said, he got away but not without us getting a piece of him, pick that up for me will you? I need to get Tenten some help, as he began to walk toward the inn. Gara picked it up with his sand and said, come as he began to follow Naruto. Kankuro frowned and said, did you see that arm? It was blue, who the hell has blue skin? 
Tamari glared at her brother and said, did you notice anything wrong with that picture though? Why is it besides having wet cloths he looks unharmed? Kankuro thought a moment and said, hey, you're right. Tamari rolled her eyes and said, I'm always right, it comes with being a woman, come on, as she ran to catch up with Naruto and Gara. When they got to the inn Naruto saw the girl at the desk and he asked, hey, what room is the Sandime inn? The girl looked up and got wide-eyed and said in a stutter voice, Naruto-sama, before she fainted. Naruto screamed, for the love of God, can I get some fucking help here? The Sandime's voice said, and what would you need help with Naruto? As he came down the stairs but when he saw Tenten in Naruto arm he narrowed his eyes and moved quickly to Naruto's side and he saw the blood on Tenten cloths and said, hurry, put her down and tell me what happened, as he cleared a spot for Tenten. Naruto sat her down and said, we were attacked by Kisum Hoshigaki, Atachi partner but luckily Atachi wasn't there. He got her in the arm with Samehada and the back of the head with his fist. The Sandime hands were already glowing green and he checked her head and arm and he asked, anywhere else. Naruto said, not that I saw. I took most of the damage but my, gift took a beating. The Sandime frowned at this but after a few moments sighed as he looked Tenten over once more and then eyed Naruto as he said, she has a minor concussion and will most likely be out for the rest of the day but her arm will take about three or four days to heal the rest of the way. What about you? Any injuries? Naruto grabbed the arm of Kisum from Gara Sand and said, just a piece here and there. The Sandime's eyes were wide a moment and asked, is he still alive? Naruto said, unfortunately yes, after Tenten was taken out I forced us off the cliff into the ocean to save her from more damage and I took his arm while we were underwater and he fled to keep from dying of blood loss. I plan to go back there after I rest a little bit and see if I can find Samehada. The Sandime said, not without Jiraiya you're not. We can't let Akatsuki get their hands on you or Gara." Tamari narrowed her eyes and asked, who is Akatsuki and why would they be after Gara?" Jiraiya voice said, Akatsuki is a group of S-class missing nin, they plan to capture and extract each of the Bayou for what purpose I don't know. I only know of four members, Kisum Hoshigaki, Atachi Uchiha, Sasori of the Red Sand and former member Orikimaru, making the sand sips wide-eyed hearing Sasori name. Gara said, and they will be coming after Naruto and I, trying to get all the info he can. Jiraiya nods and said, it is one of the reason why Naruto and I are on this trip to return you home to inform sooner about this threat and yourself, as he tossed Naruto a scroll. Naruto asked, what's in the scroll? Jiraiya said, it's the instruction for Kuchio's no jutsu as well as a few toads who you need to know for when you can summon them. Now how much did Kisum see and know now? Naruto sighed and said, Raisin Shuriken, he already knew about my Senban trick and because of the amount of times Samehada hit me he most likely knows about my gift now along with both my chakra weapons though they were not much help. Jiraiya frowned and said, that's most of your arsenal kid. Naruto frowned and said, I know but I couldn't help it. Kisum was too strong for me. Tamari asked, what is this gift you keep talking about? Is it Kyubi? As she eyed Naruto. Naruto looked nervous and said, nothing, look, Doc can you take Tenten to your room Temari? Just because I didn't see any other injuries doesn't mean she didn't take them and I don't want to cause any problems. I don't think she would want any of us to help her if she needs it, as he got a little red on his cheeks. Temari blinked looking at him and then looked at the others and said, I get it, geese. You want me to check her out and watch her since I am the only other female in the group. Grab Panda Bear and follow me to my room, as she began going up the stairs. Naruto followed to the third floor and Temari opened a door and Naruto followed her into the room and she motioned for the bed and he put Tenten on the second twin bed in the room and Temari said, now get out so I can make sure she doesn't have any other injuries you pervert, as she shoved him out of the room and slammed the door closed and he heard it lock. Temari frowned as she walked back over to Tenten and looked at the blood and the wound and thought, well Panda, let's get you cleaned up. As she walked over to Tenten's bag and pulled out several scrolls and thought, so she seals everything, not just weapons, as she put the scrolls back and walked over to Tenten and began to remove Tenten's cloths and got a few of her own supplies and docked her a few scrapes and minor cuts as well as washing some of the dirt and blood off of her leaving Tenten in only her panties and her chest bindings. Tamari thought, well, her body's not bad, shows she is a real kanoiki instead of one of those wannabe fan girls. I can respect that though we are going to have a talk when she wakes up. I need to know what happened with this Akatsuki. 
After dropping Tenton off in Temari room he entered his room where Jiraiya and the Sandime were and the Sandime asked, All right Naruto, I want to hear everything that happened. Naruto sighed and began telling about talking to Tenton without telling what was actually said and then he detailed the battle with Kissam and Eva showed a hologram of it. The Sandime was quiet for several minutes after it was over and finally said, Naruto. While I am pleased that you protected your teammate and did what was necessary I don't like the fact you threw caution to the wind and endangered yourself and her by following him into the water. You can fly, even if it was damaged you still had partial ability to fly so you should have after knocking him off the cliff and getting free flew back up and got her to safety. Not use Lee Rendon to slam him into the water trying to take him out. Naruto frowned and looked down and the Sandime said, but I am proud of you Naruto. You showed in the battle you did have good chun and qualities by ordering her to leave as well as rearming her even though she was armed. I notice you were trying to use the side as you would a sword. That won't work because they're two different styles. Naruto said, I know. I got some books on staffs, sides and swords to read but I haven't had a chance to yet. The third said, well, I could write down for you the basic katas for the staff if you want. There are only ten of them and they would help you with the scythe. Naruto was wide-eyed and said, really, that would be great Gigi. The third smiled and said, well get some rest Naruto and I will have that for you in the morning, were you able to get everything taken care of that you needed to? Naruto's smile faded and said, yeah though the fighting damaged it a little. Jiraiya said, it happens kid, there is always collateral damage from fighting, especially to the innocent, as he remembered Rain Country and the three orphans he taught there. Naruto frowned and said, I guess, it's just that was the only thing I had left of Haku and now it's gone. The Sandime said, you're wrong Naruto. You still have something of this Haku person, in here, as he touched Naruto heart, and here, and then his head. Naruto sighed and nods and said, if you don't mind, I'm not feeling too well anymore and need some rest. Today been emotional for me as well as physically tiring. The Sandime said, of course Naruto, let's go Jiraiya as he got up and left with Jiraiya. After they left Eva said, you know I am proud of you. You protected Tenten and showed Akatsuki you were not just going to sit back and let them get you. Naruto thought, yeah but now they know what I can do and will be ready next time. I need to get stronger. Tenten could have died today. I can't let that happen to my teammates, especially one who accepts me for me and not QB. Eva said, you might have to tell her about me Naruto. She did see you take damage a lot and not get hurt. Naruto sighed and nods and said, well it's time to get to training. Kajbunshin no jutsu. Alright, I want seven of you to read all those books and the scroll on summoning while the other three go work on chakra control until you're almost out of chakra and dispel. The ones who are reading if you finish the book or scroll trade with the others and read it again. I want all theme memorized. I am going to go get something to eat with Inari, Tsunami, and Tazuna as he jumped out of the room window. Once Jiraiya and the Sandime made it back to the Sandime room the Sandime said, Jiraiya, Dot H is exhausted mentally. I didn't realize before since he always had on his mask but H is tired. I want you to see if you can help him. Jiraiya frowned and said, I know. Weasel just informed me that they're planning to go into hiding for the next three years but they caught three already. The kid did a number on Kissam though. Besides the severed arm he also got a slice in the side, an inch lower and it would have taken out his kidney from what I saw. The third asked, will he survive? Jiraiya said, unfortunately yes and the kid can forget going to get Samehada. I saw it crawling back to kiss him using its blades to move itself. The third sighed and said, when you're not training him yourself Jiraiya I want you to give him scrolls to study off of. We have to get him stronger fast or he won't survive. Weasel is only fifth strongest in that group from his reports. Jiraiya sighed and said, I understand. I guess I better go plan what to teach him. The third nods and Jiraiya left the room and the Sandime side before he prepared to order room service. The next morning when Tenten awoke she found herself in a strange bed in a room she had never seen before and she looked around and frowned when she saw Temari putting her hair up and she sat up wincing and Temari said, take it easy panda. You got a little roughed up yesterday. Tenten asked, what happened after I passed out and where is Naruto? Is he alright? Temari turned and said, yeah, he is fine though I was surprised at how long he could fuck you while you slept. 
Tenten eyes got wide as she looked down at her body and Temari burst out laughing as Tenten saw how she was dressed in her panties and bindings and was worried a moment until she heard the laughing and she glared at Temari and said, screw you dessert rat. That's not funny. Temari wiped fake tears from the corner of her eyes and said, ah damn, I needed that. So what really happened out there? You come back looking like you took on an entire team by yourself and all Naruto came back with was wet cloths. Tenten frowned and asked, and why the hell should I tell you anything? Temari smirked and said, because I had to take care of you or would you want one of the guys to check you for wounds? Also Hokage Sama said the guy who attacked you were after Naruto and my brother and I need to know everything I can about them so I could protect him. As her expression turned from joking to serious. Tenten blinked and asked, where are my cloths? Temari said, they're in the bathroom. I washed the blood off of them for you as she grabbed her bag and packed her stuff back up. Tenten immediately jumped out of bed grabbing her bag and ran toward the bathroom and began to change. After she got dressed she walked out and saw Temari was sitting on the bed and she asked, well. Tenten frowned and said, fine, as she began to tell what happened with Kissam. After she was done Temari asked, so you're saying he has some kind of armor on that kept him from being hurt by Kissam's sword. Tenten said, yeah but. Dot but I didn't see the armor even though I felt it and heard the sound of metal hitting metal. Temari nods and said, well we better get downstairs before they come looking for us. We are supposed to leave as soon as you're up and ready. Get your shit ready Panda Chan and quit being a useless damsel in distress. It is so fan girlish. No wonder I kicked your ass, as she left quickly ignoring Tenton's scream of rage. When Tenten got to the lobby she saw Temari standing with her brothers and she saw Naruto standing over by Jiraiya and the Sandime and she jumped over the rail and leaps toward Temari with a roar. Temari saw this with a smirk on her face and she grabbed Tenten arm and flipped her over and slammed her against a coffee table breaking it and twisted Tenten arm and said bad girl. Sit. Naruto acting quickly when he heard Tenten roar ran over and as Temari said, sit, he grabbed her from behind and said, stop it, both you in a commanding voice pulling her away from Tenten who stood up and made a leap at Temari again only for Gara-san to wrap around her and he said, Naruto ask you both to stop. Now listen to him. After several moments of both girls trying to get free of Jirai walked over and said, if you both can't get along then I have no choice but to force you to. As he pulled out a pair of handcuffs and locked both Temari and Tenten's hands together making both girls glare at each other and him before they stopped struggling and were let go by Gara and Naruto. The third side as he walked over and looked at Tenten and asked, now that you're both have calmed down would you please explain why you attacked her Tenten. Tenten glaring at Temari several moments and said, it's personal sir. The third frowned and looked at Temari and asked, what about you Temari, do you have anything to say? Temari said, no, I think Panda here realizes her place, with a smirk. Tenten screamed and tried to lunge at Temari only to be stopped by Naruto who got between both of them and said, stop it while releasing some key and made both girls freeze from it. After they stopped fighting Naruto glared at both and said, do you both think you can act like Kanoiki instead of a couple of fan girls fighting over a guy? Both girls blinked and looked at him and thought basically the same thing, did he just insult me by calling me a fan girl? His answer was a pair of lumps on his skull. Naruto muttered to himself as he rubbed his head and stepped back and the third shook his head and said, now that you're both calmed down is everyone ready to leave? Tenten said, I need to go grab my scrolls from my room. The third looked at both girls and said, very well but no fighting either of you. You have already destroyed private property. If you both cannot get along for the rest of the trip I will see to it that both of you have to pay Naruto here for damage to his inn and ask both the new Kazekage and Hokage to give you both solo D rank missions for a year. Both girls paled at this and quickly said, we won't fight, at the same time. The third nods and they both went up the stairs to get Tenten's scrolls. Naruto sighed and the third asked, so how long do you think it will take before they start fighting again? Kankuro said, knowing Temari, I would say they will be at it again before we cross the bridge. Gara said, tomorrow. Naruto said, I don't care as long as they don't destroy anything else. I don't want to cause anyone here any trouble after everything they went through already as he walked over to the desk where another girl was at and he pulled out several hundred dollars and he said take this and replace the table they broke please. The girl behind the counter said, of course Naruto-sama though may I ask, when will you be back again? 
Naruto frowned and said, I don't know, why? The girl said, because I was wondering if you would like to go out on a date the next time you came through, with a blush on her face. Jiraiya smirked and the third closed his eyes and looked away and Naruto said, um, dot how about we wait until then to decide because I don't know when or if I will ever be back again and I don't want you to miss a chance at happiness waiting on a possible friendly date that may never come. If I do come back and you're not with someone you can ask me then and we can go from there. Deal. The girl frowned a moment and then smiled brightly and said, deal Naruto-sama. Naruto let out a breath he didn't realize he was holding and he turned to the others and saw Tenten and Temari both with the others looking at him and he asked, what? Jiraiya chuckled and the third said, I believe it is time for us to leave now Naruto. We don't want to delay any longer. Naruto nods slowly and said, right, let's go. As he headed out the door. The group traveled in silence until they got back in the fire country after crossing the great Naruto bridge and as they jumped through the trees Tenten and Temari were side by side still handcuffed together. As they traveled Jiraiya looked at Naruto and asked, so how many have you gotten on the Raisin Shuriken? Naruto glanced at him and said, seven. Jiraiya nods and said, have you looked at the scroll for summoning I made you? Naruto said, yeah, I had a clone read it last night while I had a couple of others read the books I have on swords, staffs, and scythes. I plan to have them reread them though because I want to make sure I got all the info from them. Jiraiya nods and the third said, that reminds me Naruto. I wrote that scroll with the kata for you and I will give it to you when we stop around noon for a break. Naruto nods and Tenten asked, what about me? I mean do I have anything to work on or... The third interrupted her and said, I haven't forgotten you Tenten. I have a scroll with ten Sutenjutsu I want you to work on. I asked Guy what your elemental affinity is and he told me it was water. I know that you won't be able to practice them much when we get to sooner since water is so hard to come by there but I also added four Dotenjutsu for you to try that will help you should you ever face a wind element again. Tenten nods and Temari jumped harder on the next leap jerking Tenten arm and nearly causing her to miss the next branch and Tenten glared at her as Temari smirked. Jiraiya said, that reminds me Naruto, here, channel chakra into this so I can see what affinity you have, as he handed Naruto a small piece of paper. Naruto took the paper and looked at it a moment and he sent a small amount of chakra into the card and it split down the middle and then the outside edge of it got just a little wet and Jiraiya raised an eyebrow and said, it appears you're a wind element with a small secondary element for water as well. Temari glanced at Naruto and thought, he has a wind affinity, as she eyed him more carefully. The Sandime said, that is rare Naruto. In Kanoa besides my son Asuma and the Yondime was the only other wind affinity that I can remember in all these years. Tenten looked at Naruto and said, that reminds me. You said your mother passed away and her name was Kushina Uzumaki but who was your father Naruto? Naruto looked at her and he put his hands together and said Tajukich Bunshin no Jutsu. As the entire area behind where the group was jumping was suddenly covered in smoke and the group stopped and the Sandime asked, why did you form those clones just now Naruto? As he eyed all the clones who were now walking up and down the trees while balancing leaves on their hands. Naruto said, it's Thursday. Shizun told me that I need to start a schedule of doing chakra control exercises several times a week and since we are heading toward the desert and they don't have any trees there from what I was told then I need to get my practice in now. Temari snorts and said, it's not like we don't have our own chakra control exercises. Naruto said, I guess, but I don't know them, now do I. I only know the ones Kanoa knows, as he looked at her with resentment on his face. The third frowned as he saw this and said, Naruto, while it is a good idea to keep up your practice with your chakra control, doing it while on a mission, especially while tree hopping is not a smart idea. Naruto looked at him and winked and the third blinked and thought, why would he wink at me like it was a joke, as his eyes got wide as he looked at Tenten and thought, I see. Dot you didn't want to reveal who your father is so you did something to cause a scene, as he gave Naruto a pointed look and Naruto said, all right, I get it as he cancelled the jutsu and nearly 500 kajbunshin went up in smoke. Kankuro said, wasn't that a waste of chakra forming all of those kajbunshin? Naruto said, not really when you think about the bonus of kajbunshin anything they learn before they are dispelled or destroyed is transferred back to the user so I just got over two hours worth of chakra control exercise in less than five minutes. Each of the genin got wide-eyed at that and Gara, who thought a moment looked at Naruto and said, do you think I could learn that jutsu Naruto? 
Naruto blinked and looked at Gara thinking quickly and the Sandime said, I am afraid that is not. Naruto interrupted him and said, Gigi, catching the third's attention and he continued and said, maybe that might not be a bad idea. I know what you're going to say about that being a forbidden jutsu and I agree that it's not a good idea to just teach anyone that jutsu but there are a couple of exceptions in this case you might want to think about. The first is a katasuki. I got lucky both times I faced them so far because they underestimated me so I am going to have to get strong quicker but I am not their only target. The second this is you said it yourself that besides your son there isn't anyone in Kanoa who can use wind elements. Maybe if I teach Gara the Kajbunshin Jutsu to help him train to get stronger to keep them from getting him he could get me some help with my wind element. That way we both get stronger and better ninja for our village and to keep a Katasuki from getting us. The third thought a moment as Jiraiya said, he does have a point sensei. Especially with that coming up. The third frowned as he looked at everyone there and he looked at Gara and said, I will consider it but we need to get going. I will give you my decision when we get to sooner but you are not to teach it to him unless I approve Naruto. Agreed. Naruto frowned and said, yeah. I got you Gigi. Tenten asked, so are you going to answer my question now or are you going to try and divert attention again Naruto? Making the Sandime smirk to himself. Naruto said, him, you say something Tenten. Making Jiraiya and the Sandime face fault. Tenten glared at Naruto and Temari said, ah, is Foxy shy about his daddy? Naruto was about to say something when he heard Eva say, don't lose your cool Naruto. They are just teasing you to see what buttons it takes to get a rise out of you. Naruto thought, where have you been Eva? Eva said, I have been working on the repairs to the armor. It is at 70% but it will take a little time to finish repairing it. Naruto thought, okay, I was worried something might have happened to you since you usually talk to me earlier than this. Everyone was watching Naruto face as it shifted several times and Tenten said, Naruto. Naruto. Hey. As she snapped her fingers in front of his face. Naruto blinked several times and saw everyone looking at him and he asked, what? Tamari said, you spaced out there for a moment. Panda here called out to you several times and you never answered. Did my comment about you being shy about your father disturb you that much? Naruto said, no, it's just um. I was thinking about some stuff that happened recently. Sorry. Kankuro said, you know you suck at lying right. I mean it looked like you were having a conversation. Oh. You were talking to QB, weren't you? Naruto eyes got wide and he looked at Jiraiya and the Sandime and he began to fidget until he heard Eva in his head and he took a deep breath and said, no. I forgot I had left a Kajbunshin back in wave to look for Kisum Sword Samehada and it came across the decayed body of one of Gato Menzabuza killed when he killed Gato before he died that had washed up it was gross having had some fish eat at it and I wasn't expecting that memory. As for my father, it's not that I am shy about who my father was. It is just that I am not sure what to think about my father is all. From what I was told about him he was just a simple man with a simple life that died the same day I was born. Nothing big to tell about him, as he shrugged his shoulders. Jiraiya saw how Naruto covered up the truth said, well I guess we should get going again, right sensei? The third said, yes. I agree Jiraiya, also catching on to what Naruto did. Naruto smiled softly and began hoping to the next set of branches and the third said quietly as he pulled up beside Naruto, you need to control your facial expressions better when talking to your tenants in the future if you don't want to answer certain questions. It might be a good idea to try and lay low the rest of the trip if possible. Naruto nods and said, right. The third asked, how is your, gift? Naruto glanced to make sure no one was close enough to hear and said, repairs are only at 70%. It will take a little while to repair. The third nods and he quickly jumps in front of Naruto increasing his speed and showing the Genins and Chunin exactly why he is a cage. Jiraiya also matches his pace forcing all talking in the group to end as they have to concentrate harder to keep up. When the group stopped at noon the Sandime walked over to Naruto and handed him a scroll and said, this is the kata I promised you. As he walked over to Tenten and said as he handed her a scroll, and this is the scroll I promised you. Study them when we can but get you something to eat right now because we leave in 20 minutes. As he walked over and unsealed a sandwich. Naruto began to memorize the scroll and Tenten was sitting beside Temari who was talking with her brothers was reading hers having already ate and Jiraiya asked, why don't you eat Naruto? Making everyone look up at him. 
Naruto frowned and said, I'm not hungry, as he rolled up the scroll and walked into the woods ignoring his stomach that growled. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes and looked at the third who had also narrowed his eyes and Jiraiya began to walk after Naruto into the woods. He found Naruto about 100 yards away from the others and he asked, so what's up? Naruto said, nothing, why? Jiraiya said, oh, just the fact you didn't eat anything until we got to wave country and you're not eating now. Naruto frowned and said, it's nothing all right. I just didn't bring anything to eat so I will just catch me something to eat tonight. It's no big deal. Knowing that Jiraiya won't let the subject drop until he answered. Jiraiya frowned and slapped Naruto upside the back of the head and said, Barker. Don't you know that you should always get you something to eat for missions? Naruto glared at him and Eva appeared and said, he tried Jiraiya but the stores threw him out, before disappearing. Jiraiya frowned as she left and looked at Naruto who was looking at the ground and Jiraiya pulled out a scroll and unsealed some beef strips and said, here. Eat up and if you have that problem again let me know Naruto. I am your godfather and I want to help you. Naruto frowned and thought, only now you do, as he saw Jiraiya walk away back toward the group. After he was gone Naruto heard Eva say, you know that he does care as do others. Naruto sighed and thought, I know but, I don't feel right at the moment. Something is wrong with me. I can't put my mask back on around the others for some reason and it annoys me because people are actually seeing the real me and I don't like it. Eva said, but isn't that exactly what you wanted people to do? To see you for you and not QB. Naruto began to eat and thought, I, I guess you're right but I can't help but want to be defensive. I mean he is my godfather and I heard what his reason for not being there was and even though I accept it I can't but feel betrayed. Eva said, just like you do with the sand I'm right. I mean he knew who your parents were and until you forced it he wouldn't tell you anything. Naruto frowned and thought, yeah, I guess you're right, what should I do? Eva chuckled and said, accept it and go on. You are only human after all but I think you are going to need to reveal me sooner than you think. Naruto thought, what do you mean? Eva said, I used my sonar ability to listen in on the girls last night after we got back and this morning to make sure your teammate was okay for you so you wouldn't worry and I overheard Temari questioning Tenten about the battle and Tenten had to tell her about the armor. Naruto sighed as he finished eating and thought, I guess then I don't have a choice but to tell her but I won't until she asked me about it. Eva said, good. You feel betrayed because of the Sandime and Jiraiya but you are doing the same thing to her. Trust her and I promise that things will work out between you and she won't feel betrayed like you do now. Naruto thought, all right but not until she either ask me or until you're fully recovered. What is the status? Eva said, 75%. Naruto nods and gets back up and walks toward the group. When he got there the Sandime asked, is everyone ready? Temari asked, can he release Panda and me because I need to use the restroom and I don't want an audience. Jiraiya looked at them both and asked, are you both going to behave now? Both girls nod and he walked over and uncuffed them and both girls ran in opposite directions into the woods making everyone blink and Kankuro said, I guess they both needed to go bad. Naruto shook his head and asked, so how long till we get there Gigi? The third said, actually, I would say we should reach the border tomorrow morning around 9 and then if everyone is ready for desert travel we can be in sooner by 8 tomorrow night. Kankuro said, you honestly expect those two to travel by desert standards in the heat of the day. It's their funeral. Naruto said, can it make up boy? Tenten and I both can make it because we are both two of the best Kanoa has to offer. It was just dumb luck that she drew your sister who was her natural weakness. If she would have faced anyone else she would have made a pincushion out of both of you. Naruto tensed as he felt a pair of arms surround him from behind and he heard Tenten say, ah, that's sweet. Nobody ever complimented my skills like that before but. Naruto felt a kunai at his throat and he heard her say, you ever tell me to shut up like you did when we faced sushi and I don't care what kind of armor you are wearing. I will kick you ass so hard the fox will spend the rest of your life trying to pull my foot from it. Naruto actually swallowed hard at this and said, fine. Tenten said, good. Dot now what is that armor? Temari said, I was wondering about that as well. I mean Panda said she could not see it at all but heard and felt it so what is it? Naruto looked at the Sandime and Jiraiya and both had an amused look on their face and Naruto said, it's personal and I rather not say right now, 
at least until it is fully repaired but please don't tell anyone else about it because it pretty much as much a part of me as Gara Sand is for him. Tamari said, fine but I want to know as well Foxy. Tenton said, all right. I will give you some time and I have another thing I want to ask about. As she leaned forward and whispered in his ear, Eva. Naruto eyes went wide but quickly hid it and he thought, how the hell does she know about you? All he got was silence. Naruto stepped back and said, I think it's time to go, right Gigi? Jiraiya said, yeah it is so let's go and I told you that it was only a matter of time before someone found out about that. Naruto said, whatever Ero Sanon. As he jumped into the trees after the Sandime who had already taken off. Jiraiya grumbled and said, no respect. As he caught up to the group who was now moving at top speed for everyone but Jiraiya and the Sandime. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.